Valar Morgulis and welcome to another video in the series guys, Pints of Ice and Fire. The series in which I, Andy the Extra from fucking Game of Thrones and House Stark, fucking what, right, read to you from George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire. So guys, uh, oh, and at the same time what I do is I fucking just drink pints, therefore it's Pints of Ice and Fire. Fuck I, right? So I'm just gonna put my wee pint down. Now, guys, last week I brought you, or last time I brought you um, uh, a chapter from Victorian Greyjoy. Obviously a character that didn't make it into the television adaption. This week, uh, I'm gonna be looking at a scene that you'll be familiar with, and it's the parley at Storm's End between Renly and Stannis. It's very well, um, very well done in the show, I, I found. Um, very little really left out. You, but in the show you, you get the gist of what's happening and the relationship between the two brothers. And it's why I love this chapter so much, is you the back and forth between the two brothers. And the reason why I love this is because Renly and Stannis are very much, they are fucking just fucking aiming for the Iron Throne. Anybody that pursues the Iron Throne, in my opinion, it will fuck you up, right? And if the pursuit, you know, um, that's that's the beauty of it, I find. What we all have is Renly Baratheon, shit. It would be a fucking, it would be a brilliant King Renly in peacetime, right? And this is what I love between the, the contrast of the two brothers. On one side we have Renly, a fantastic king during peacetime. Um, if we look then at the other end of the spectrum, we have Stannis Baratheon, right? So Renly would be good during peacetime. Um, but then let's say war comes. Renly has no experience of war. He, I just don't think he would concern himself with it at all in a way. And the realm would get fucked by... I don't know, somebody from across an arrow seat or something, right? Or you'd be disposed really, uh, deposed really easily. Um, but then we look at Stannis Baratheon, a sh shite king during peacetime. He would still rule the kingdom with an iron fist during peacetime. Now war, Stannis is a seasoned battle commander. He would actually make a very good warrior king. But, you know, you've got to have a king that's going to be good during peacetime and wartime otherwise what the fuck's the point you know what i'm saying so um yeah two lads um totally wrong to shut the iron throne both of them uh which is the thing and uh yeah so what i'm going to do here guys is just explain a couple of things first number one you might hear my next door neighbor doing this right i'm not even fucking joking you'll hear doing this <laughs> Right, I mean, that is fucking every day, right? But we also have, you might hear some dogs barking. It's just next door as well. And, um, yeah, just in case you fucking hear any weird sounds, okay? Um, guys, this chapter is a chapter from uh, Lady Catelyn Stark. Obviously, L Lady Catelyn Stark has been sent as an envoy by Rob Stark, her son, the King of the North, has been sent to um, Storm's End. Um, or to treat with Renly and um, so that explains her attendance exactly the same as the show um, so yeah I'm just going to get the fuck clean into this but before I do it guys please do not if you like this video what you fucking do come on man you're reading songs of Song of Ice and Fire and, and watching a fucking Irishman, big beardy Irishman, drinking fucking pints. Right, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit that join button, ring that bell, all of that fucking good shit right there. You fucking know it, alright? So guys, what I'll do as well is try my very best at the, at the character voices, okay? I'll try my very best at the character voices. As I said before, um, I may fucking... The blah get tongue tied and shit like that, but I'm just gonna keep on. I'm I'll just hop back and start again. Okay. So think of this as an informal reading. Imagine you've come round hey and fucking uh 
and they go and read me a story and I'm going, no fucking problem at all. You lay back kid and you let Andy read you fucking Song of Ice and Fire. Right? Just one more so we fucking jeez, because this is good these are good tonight, hey. Oh so nice. Right? <clears throat> Here we go. From George R. R. Martin's A Clash of Kings um, Cattle. The meeting place was a grassy sward dotted with pale grey mushrooms and the raw stumps of fell trees. We are the first, my lady, Hallis Mullins said as they reined up amidst the stumps alone between the armies. The direwolf banner of House Stark flapped and fluttered atop the lance he wore. Catelyn could not see the sea from here, but she could feel how close it was. The smell of salt was heavy on the wind gusting from the east. Stannis Baratheon's foragers had cut the trees down for his siege towers and catapults. Catelyn wondered how long the grove had stood, and whether Ned had rested here when he led his host south to lift the last siege of Storm's End. He had won a great victory that day, all the greater for being bloodless. God's grant that I shall do the same, Catelyn prayed. Her own liege men thought she was mad even to come. This is a no fight of ours, my lady, so Wendell Manderley had said. I know the king would not wish his mother to be put, uh, put herself at risk. We are all at risk, she told him, perhaps too sharply. Do you think I wish to be here, sir? I belong at Riveron with my dying father at Winterfell with my sons. Rob sent me south to speak for him, and speak for him I shall. It was no easy thing to forge a peace between these brothers, Catelyn knew, yet for the good of the realm it must be tried. Across rain-sodden fields and stony ridges she could see the great castle of Storm's End rearing up against the sky, its back to the unseen sea. Beneath that mass of pale grey stone, the encircling army of Lord Stannis Baratheon looked as small and insignificant as mice with banners. The song said that Storm's End had been raised in ancient days by Duran, the first Storm King, who had won the love of the fair Elenheim, daughter of the sea god and the goddess of the wind. On the night of their wedding, Elenai had yielded her maidenhood to a mortal's love and thus doomed herself to a mortal's death. And her grieving parents had unleashed their wrath and sent their winds and waters to batter down Juran's hold. His friends and brothers and wedding guests were crushed beneath collapsing walls or blown out to sea, but Elenai sheltered Duran within her arms so he took no harm. And when the dawn came at last, he declared war upon the gods and vowed to rebuild. Five more castles he built, each larger than the last, only to see them smashed asunder when the gale winds came howling up Shipbreaker Bay, driving great walls of water before them. His lords pleaded with him to build inland. His priests told him he must placate the gods by giving Elenai back to the sea. Even his small folk begged him to relent. Durin would have none of it. A seventh castle he raised, most massive of all. Some said the children of the forest helped him build it, shaping the stones with magic. Others claimed that a small boy told him what he must do. A boy who would grow to be Bran the Builder. No matter how old the tale was told, the end was the same. Though the angry gods threw storm after storm against it, the seventh castle stood defiant in Duran God's grief, and fair Elenai dwelt there together until the end of their days. Even 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 the castles and shit, the stories they have behind them in this world is this is why I fell in love with this shit. It's the it's the detail of 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 castles and the descriptions and shit like that and even the history and stuff like that you know it's like we don't know too much about um lan the clever from the age of heroes who took casterly rock from the casterlies and shit um but 
just to hear the, the story of Cast of Iraq in the uh, book world, I will call that, in the book world, Cast of Iraq is like three times the height of the wall. So it's just a huge rock with a fucking castle built on the top of it. Fucking up in class. It's built there, man. Right? That is fucking high as well. <laughs> How the fuck are you attacking that? You know? That is like major. So, <clears throat> right. A dragon, of course. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, I'll just read that little last bit again. And during God and Duran, God's grief and fair Eleni dwelt there together until the end of their days. Gods do not forget, and still the gales came raging up the narrow sea, yet storms end endured. Through centuries and tens of centuries, a castle like no other. Its great curtain wall was a hundred feet high, unbroken by arrow slit or postern. Everywhere rounded, curving smooth, its stones fit so cunningly together that nowhere was a crevice nor angle nor gap by which the wind might enter. That wall was said to be 40 feet thick at its narrowest and near 80 on the seaward face. A double course of stones with an inner core of sand and rubble. Within that mighty bulwark, the kitchens and stables and yards sheltered safe from wind and wave. Of towers there was but one, a colossal drum tower windowless where it faced the sea. So large so large it was granary and barracks and feast hall and lord's dwelling all in one, crowned by a massive battlement that made it crowned by massive battlements that made it look from afar like a spiked fist atop an upthrust arm. So that right. My lady, Hal Mullen called. Two riders had emerged from the tidy little camp beneath the castle, and they were coming toward them at a slow walk. That will be King Stannis. No doubt. Catelyn watched them come. Stannis it must be. Yet that is not the Baratheon banner. It was bright yellow. Not the rich of Renly standards. And the device it bore was red, though she could not make out its shape. Renly would be last to arrive. He had told her as much when she set out. You see, that, 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 um, that speaks volumes there. Renly would be the last to arrive. You know, he, 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 he thinks that keep by keeping Stannis waiting. I have that power over him. It's a very shallow, weak attempt at trying to overpower someone by making them wait. It also speaks to me like, um, you know, Renly would like to be fashionably late. <laughs> right. He did not propose to mount his horse until he saw his brother well on his way. The first to arrive must wait on the other and Renly would do no waiting. It is a sort of game kings play, she told herself. Well, she was no king, so she need not play it. Catelyn was practised at waiting. As she neared, she saw, st she saw that Stannis wore a crown of red gold with points fashioned in the shape of flames. His belt was studded with garnets and yellow topaz, and a great square ruby was set in the hilt of the sword he wore. Otherwise, his dress was plain. Studded leather jerking over quilted doublet, worn boots, breeches of brown rungspun. Right, that is interesting. There, um, his belt was studded with garnets and yellow topaz, and a great square cut ruby was set in the hilt of the sword that he wore. Anybody that knows the books will know that Stannis Baratheon wears Lightbringer. Later on in the series, later on in the books, um, Stannis Baratheon goes to Castle Black, exactly the same as the show, but he presents Lightbringer. He brings the sword out, and Samuel Tarly bears witness to this, as many other people in Castle Black, they bear witness to the sword. But Master Eamon Targaryen, um, he questions Sam after, obviously Master Eamon's blind, and he's saying, 
Sam, right? There may have been light, uh, light coming off the sword, but was there any heat? And Sam couldn't answer. Sam, you know, was like, no, right? And it's funny that there's a ruby on the end of the sword. That is That must be how Melisandre makes it light the fuck clean up. Just a thought. Just a thought. It's almost the, the same way she glamours, um, you know, um, Rattle Shirt, the Lord of Bones, to look like Mance Raider whenever he's getting fucking burned. All right. Um, her ruby pulsates around her neck and shit like that. So that's the power. So I'm wondering if she, the, 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 the ruby is on the hilt for that specific reason. Interesting. Interesting indeed. So I'm like going, right? You, you bitch be using rubies for shit, right? So here we go. <coughs> yes. Uh, and, a great, and a great square cut ruby was set in the hilt of the sword he wore. Otherwise his dress was plain. Studded leather jerking over quilted doublet. Worn boots, breeches of brown rungsman. The device on his sun yellow banner showed a red heart surrounded by a blaze of orange fire. The crown stag was there, yes, shrunken and enclosed within the heart. Even more curious was his standard bearer, a woman, garbed all in red, face shadowed within the deep hood of her scarlet cloak. A red priestess, Catelyn thought, wondering. The sect was numerous and powerful in the three in the free cities and the distant east, but there were few in the Seven Kingdoms. Lady Stark, Stannis Baratheon said with chill courtesy as he reined up. He inclined his head, balder than she remembered. Lord Stannis, she returned. Beneath the tight trimmed beard, his heavy jaw clenched hard, yet he did not hector her about titles. For that she was truly grateful. I had not thought to find you here at Storm's End. Well, I had not thought to be here. His deep-set eyes regarded her uncomfortably. This was not a man made for easy courtesies. I am sorry for your lord's death, he said, though Edard Stark was no friend to me. He was never your enemy, my lord. When the Lord's Tyrell and Redwine held you prisoned in that, in that castle, starving, it was Eddard Stark who broke the siege. At my brother's command, not for love of me, Stannis answered. Lord Eddard did, did his duty, I will not deny it. Did I ever do less? I should have been Robert's hand. That was your brother's will. Ned never wanted it. Yet he took it. That which should have been mine. Still, I give you my word, you shall have justice for his murder. How they love to promise head, heads. How they love to promise head. That's what I said. How they love to promise head. <laughs> These men who would be king. <laughs> right? I'll read that again. It's not the, it's not, the, it's amazing how one letter can change that, right? How they loved to promise heads, these men who would be king. Your brother promised me the same, but if truth be told, I would sooner have my daughters back and leave justice to the gods. If your children are found when I take this city, then they shall be sent to you. Alive or dead, his tone implied. And when shall that be, Lord Stannis? King's Landing is close to your Dragonstone, but I find you here instead. You are frank, Lady Stark. Very well, I'll answer you frankly. To take the city, I need the power of those of these southern lords I see across the field. My brother has them. I must take them from him. Men give their allegiance where they will, my lord. These lords swore fealty to Robert and House Baratheon. If you and your brother were to put aside your quarrel, I have no quarrel with Renly, should he prove dutiful. I am his elder and his king. I want only what is mine by right. 
Renly owes me loyalty and obedience, and I mean to have it. From him and from these other lords. Stana studied her face. And what cause brings you to this field, my lady? Has House Stark cast its lot with my brother? Is that the way of it? This one will never bend, she thought, yet she must try nonetheless. Too much was at stake. My son reigns as king in the north by will of our lords and people. He bends the knee to no man, but holds out the hand of friendship to all. Kings have no friends, Stana said bluntly. Only subjects and enemies. And brothers, a cheerful voice called out behind Catelyn. She glanced over her shoulder at Renly, at Lord Renly's palf, as as Lord Renly's palfrey picked her way through the stumps. The younger Baratheon was splendid in his green velvet doublet and satin cloak trimmed with fur. The crown of golden roses girded his temples, jade stag's head rising from his forehead, long black hair spilling out beneath. Jagged chunks of black diamond studded his sword belt, and a chain of gold and emeralds looped around his neck. He's a flashy bastard, hey, right? You'll notice that Stannis has very little on him. The true Stannis lies underneath, and then all of this studded gold shit that he's wearing, you know, that's shit that Melisandre's put like this flamed crown and rubies and shit that's not Stannis Baratheon you know Barenly he's fucking <clears throat> he's lording this shit up <clears throat> or trying to king this shit up right no let me see yes yeah Renly had chosen a woman to carry his banner as well though Brienne had hid her face and form behind plate armour that give no hint of her sex. It's one one thing um, Roy Detrice, who reads the audiobooks, um, he calls her Brian. Brian. Which is, and he was friends with George R. R. Martin. He's passed away now, Roy Detrice. Um, it was actually Pyromancer Hellion on the TV show too. Um, but what you have is Bri Brienne in the show, Brian in the in the audio book, Tyrell in the show, Tyrell in the audio book. So I was always wondering, is that the correct pronunciation? Has he checked with George about this shit? Who no, but who who fucking knows, right? But anyway, right. Let me see. Yes, Renly had top. Atop her twelve-foot lance, the crown stag pranced black on gold as the wind off the sea rippled the cloth. His brother's greeting was curt. Lord Renly. King Renly. Can that truly be you, Stannis? Stannis frowned. Who else should it be? Renly gave an easy shrug. When I saw that standard, I could not be certain. Who... Whose banner do you bear? Mine own. The red-clad priestess spoke up. The king has taken for his sigil the fiery heart of the Lord of Light. Renly seemed amused by that. All for the good. If we both use the same ba banner, the battle will be terribly confused. Catelyn said. Let us hope there will be no battle. We three share a common foe who would destroy us all. Stannis studied her, unsmiling. The Iron Throne is mine by rights. All those who deny that are my foes. The whole realm, <laughs> the whole realm denies it, brother, said Renly. Old men deny it in, with their death rattle and unborn children deny it in their mother's wombs. They deny it in dawn, and they deny it on the wall. No one wants you for their king. Sorry. Stannis clenched his jaw, his face taut. I swore I would never treat with you while you wore your traitor's crown. Would that I had kept that 
Would that I had kept to that vow. Just a game of shit. Stannis clenched his jaw, his face taut. I swore I would... <clears throat> Stannis clenched his jaw, his face taut. I swore I would never treat with you while you wore your traitor's crown. Would that I had kept to that vow. This is folly, Catelyn said sharply. Lord Tywin sits at Harrenhal with 20,000 swords. The remnants of the Kingslayer's army have regrouped at the Golden Tooth. Another Lannister host gathers beneath the shadow of Casterly Rock, and Cersei and her son hold King's Landing, and your precious Iron Throne. You each name yourself King, yet your kingdom bleeds, and no one lifts a sword to defend it but my son. Your son has won a few battles, and I shall win the war. The Lannisters can wait my pleasure. If you have proposals to make, make them, Stannis said brusquely, or I will be gone. Very well, said Renly. I propose that you dismount, bend your knee, and swear me your allegiance. Stannis shook back the rage. That you shall never have. You serve Robert. Why not me? Robert was my elder brother. You are the younger. Younger, bolder, and far more comely. And a thief and a usurper besides. The Targaryens called Robert usurper. He seemed to be able to bear the shame. So shall I. This will not do. Listen to yourselves. If your sons of mine, I would bang your heads together and lock you in a bedchamber until you remembered that you were brothers. Stannis frowned at her. You presume too much, Lady Stark. I am the rightful king and your son no less a traitor than my brother here. His day will come as well. The, na the, naked, the naked threat fanned her fury. You are very free to name others traitor and usurper, my lord. Yet how are you any different? You say you alone are the rightful king. Yet it seems to me that Robert had two sons. By all the laws of the seven kingdoms, Prince Joffrey is his rightful heir and Tommen after him. And we are all traitors, however good our reasons. Renly laughed. You must forgive Lady Catelyn Stannis. She's come all the way down from River Run. A long way, a horse. I fear she never saw your little letter. Joffrey is not my brother's child, Stannis said bluntly. Nor is Tommen. They are bastards. The girl as well. All three of them abominations born of incest. Would even Cersei be so mad? Catelyn was speechless. Isn't that a sweet story, my lady? Renly asked. I was camped at Horn Hill when Lord Tarly received his letter, and I must say, it took my breath away. He smiled at his brother. I had never suspected you were so clever, Stannis. Were it only true, you would indeed be Robert's heir. Were it true, do you name me a liar? Can you prove any word of this fable? Stannis groaned his teeth. Robert could never have known, Catelyn thought, or says he would have lost her head in an instant. Lord Stannis, she, said, she asked, if you knew the Queen to be guilty of such monstrous crimes, why did you keep silent? I did not keep silent, Stannis declared. I brought my suspicions to John Arryn. Rather than your own brother? My brother's regard for me was never more than dutiful, said Stannis. From me, such accusations would have seemed peevish and self-serving, a means of placing myself first in the line of succession. I believe Robert would be more disposed to listen if the charges came from Lord Arden, whom he loved. Ah, said Renly, so we have the word of a dead man. Do you think he died by happenstance, you pure blind fool? Cersei had him poisoned for fear he would reveal her. 
Lord John had been gathering certain proofs, which doubtless died with him. How inconvenient! Catelyn was remembering, fitting the pieces together. My sister Liza accused the Queen of killing her husband in a letter she sent me at Winterfell, she admitted. Later, in the Eyrie, she laid the murder at the feet of the Queen's brother, Tyrion. Stannis snorted. If you step in a nest of snakes, does it matter which one bites you first? All of this, of snakes and incests, is droll, but it changes nothing. You may well have the better claim, Stannis, but I still have the larger army. Renly's hand slid inside his cloak. Stannis saw, reached at once for the hilt of his sword, but before he could draw steel, his brother produced a peach. Would you like one, brother? Renly asked, smiling. From High Garden. You've never tasted anything so sweet, I promise you. He took a bite, just ran from the corner of his mouth. I did not come here to eat fruit, Stannis was fuming. My lords, we ought to be having in our terms of an alliance, not trading taunts. A man should never refuse to taste a peach, Renly said as he tossed the stone away. He may never get the chance again. Life is short, Stannis. Remember what the stocks say. Winter is coming. He wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. I did not come here to be threatened either. Nor were you, Renly snapped back. When I make threats, you'll know it. If truth be told, I never liked you, Stannis, but you are my own blood, and I have no wish to slay you. So if Storm's End you want, take it as a brother's gift. As Robert once gave it to me, I give it to you. It is not yours to give, it is mine by rights. Sign Renly half turned in the saddle. What am I what am I to do with this brother of mine, Brienne? He refuses my peach. He refuses my castle. He even shunned my wedding. We both know your wedding was a murmur's farce. A year ago you were scheming to make the girl one of Robert's whores. A year ago I was scheming to make the girl Robert's queen, Renly said. But what does it matter? The boar got Robert and I got Marjorie. You'll be pleased to know that she came to me a maid. In your bed, she's like to die that way. Oh, I expect I'll get a son on her within the year. Pray, how many sons do you have, Stannis? Oh, yes, none. Renly smiled insol insolently. As to your daughter, I understand that if my wife looked like yours, I'd send my fool to service her as well. Enough! Stannis roared. I will not be mocked to my face. Do you hear me? I will not! He yanked his longsword from its scabbard. The steel gleamed strangely bright in the warm sunlight. No red, no yellow, no blazing white. The air around it seemed to shimmer as if from heat. Catelyn's horse whinnied and backed away a step. But Brienne moved between the brothers, her own blade in hand. Put up your steel, she shouted at Stannis. Cersei Lannister is laughing herself breathless, Catelyn thought wearily. Stannis pointed his shining sword at his brother. I am not without mercy, thundered he who was notoriously without mercy. Nor do I wish to sully Lightbringer with a brother's blood. For the sake of the mother who bore us both, I will give you this night to rethink your folly, Renly. Strike your banners and come to me before dawn, and I will grant you Storm's End and your old seat on the council, and even name you my heir until a son is born to me. Otherwise, I shall destroy you. Renly laughed. Stannis, that's a very pretty sword, I'll grant you, but I think the glow of it has ruined your ears. Look across the field, brother. Can you see all those banners? Do you think a few bolts of cloth will make you king? Tyrell's swords will make me king. Rowan and Tarly and Karin will make me king. 
with axe and mace and warhammer, Tarth arrows and Penrose lances, Fosaway Kai, Mullendor, Estamont, Selmy, Hightower, Oakheart, Crane, Caswell, Blackbar, Morrigan, Beesbury, Shermer, Dunn, Footley. Even House Florent, your own wife's brothers and uncles, they will make me king. All the chivalry of the South rides with me, and that is and that is the least part of my power. My foot is coming behind, a hundred thousand swords and spears and pikes, and you will destroy me? With what, pray? That paltry rabble I see there huddle under the, underneath the castle walls? I call them five thousand, and be generous. Codfish lords and onion knights and sell swords. Half of them are like the Half of them are like to come over to me before the battle starts. You have fewer than four hundred horse, my scouts tell me, free riders in boar leather who will not stand an instant against armoured lances. I do not care how seasoned a warrior you think you are, Stannis. That host of yours won't survive the first charge of my vanguard. We shall see, brother. Some of the lights seem to go out of the world when Stannis hid his sword back into its scabbard. Come the dawn. We shall see. I hope your new gods are merciful, one brother. Stannis snorted and galloped away, disdainful. The red priestess lingered a moment behind. Look to your own sins, Lord Renly, she said as she wheeled her horse around. Paint time. But we we painty poos. I'll get another one there, we might. Right. <clears throat> Here we go. <sighs> Catelyn and Lord Renly rode together to the camp where his thousands and her few waited their return. That was amusing, if not terribly profitable, he commented. I wonder where I can get a sword like that. Well, doubtless, Lord, well, doubtless, Loras will make me a gift of it after the battle. It grieves me that it must come to this. You have a cheerful way of grieving, said Catelyn, whose distress was not feigned. Do I? Renly shrugged. So be it. Stannis was never the most cherished of brothers, I confess. Do you suppose this tale of his is true? If Joffrey is the King's Slayer's get, your brother is the lawful heir. While he lives, Randley admitted. Though it's a fool's law, wouldn't you agree? Why the oldest son and not the best fitted? The crown will suit me as it never suited Robert and would not suit Stannis. I have it in me to be a great king, strong yet generous, clever, just, diligent, loyal to all my friends, and terrible to my enemies, yet capable of forgiveness. Patient, humble, Catelyn supplied. Renly laughed. You must allow, you must allow a king some flaws, my lady. Catelyn was very tired. It had all been for nothing. The Baratheon brothers would drown, drown each other in blood while her son faced the Lannisters alone, and nothing she could say or do would stop it. It is past time I went back to River Run to close my father's eyes, she thought. That much at least I can do. I may be, I may be a poor envoy, but I am a good mourner. God save me. Paint time. We paint brick. We paint brick, right? I hope you're enjoying it so far, guys. Hopefully I'm not propping up too much and shit like that. But it's some oh wait, it's some writing that Martin does uh, to uh, the exchanges and stuff like that. It's brilliant. And there's there's lovely little bits of symbolism in there. Like why the fuck is Renly whipping out a peach at the meeting? 
the, the I just always think that the the peach represents the um the bounty of high garden. The reach is fucking. Do you know what I mean? They're coming down with crops and shit. So, you know, and he's got all, he's got this, based on, it's just symbolic to me, you know. Right, that bastard's gonna have to settle there. Right, but in the meantime, get cracking with the neck and get back in, right. <clears throat> Fucking, there's, there, we're coming in to a scene where there's a lot of characters, so I'm gonna have to fucking really try to jump around with accents. Fuck me. Right, here we go. Right. Their camp was well sighted atop a low stony ridge that ran from north to south. It was far more orderly than the sprawling encampment on the Mander, though only a quarter as large. When he had learned of his brother's assault on Storm's End, Renly had split his forces, much as much as Rob had done at the Twins. His great mass of foot he had left behind at Bitterbridge with his young queen, his wagons, carts, draft animals, and all his cumbersome siege machinery, while Renly himself led his knights and freeriders on a swift dash east. How like his brother he was. How like his brother Robert he was, even in that. Only Robert had always had Eddard Stark to temper his boldness with caution. Ned would surely have prevailed upon Robert to bring up his whole force to encircle Stannis and besiege the besiegers. That choice Renly had denied himself in his headlong rush to come to grips with his brother. He had outdistanced his supply lines, left food and forage days behind with all his wagons and mules and oxen. He must come to battle soon or starve. She, like that's a that's a temporary telling there. He's fucking. He doesn't his supply lines like you need to get that shit up. You need to get that shit the fuck up, right? Because your men are gonna start to get fucking hungry. So you have to fucking go to battle. Ooh, right. Catelyn sent Hal Mullen to to tend to their horses while she accompanied Renly back to the royal pavilion at the heart of the encampment. Inside the walls of green silk, his captains and Lord Bannermen were waiting to hear the word of the parley. My brother has not changed, the young king told them as Bri Brienne unfastened his cloak and lifted the golden jade crown from his brow. Castles and courtesies will not appease him. He must have blood. Well, I am of a mind to grant him his wish. Ah, uh, your grace, I see no need for battle here, Lord Mathis Rowan put in. The castle is strongly garrisoned and well provisioned. So, so Courtney Penrose is a seasoned commander, and the trebuchet has not been built that could breach the walls of Storm's End. Let Lord Stannis have his siege. He will find no joy in it, and while he sits cold and hungry and profitless, we will take King's Landing. And have men say I fear to face Stannis? Only fools will say that, Lord Ma Mathis argued. Renly looked at the others. What say you all? I say Stannis is a danger to you, Lord Randall tardily declared. Leave him unbloodied, and he will only grow stronger, while your own power is diminished by battle. The Lannisters will not be beaten in a day. By the time you are done with them, Lord Stannis may be strong as you, or stronger. Others chorused their agreement. The king looked pleased. We shall fight them. It's such a game to him. Uh -huh. Right? Because he knows fuck all. Right? I have failed, Rob, as I failed Ned, Catelyn thought. My lord, she announced, if you are set on battle, my purpose here is done. I ask your leave to return to Riverrun. You do not have it, Renly seated himself on a camp chair. She, she stuffed. I had hoped to help you make a peace, my lord. I will, I will not help you make a war. Renly gave a shrug. I dare say we'll prevail without your five-and-twenty, my lady. I 
do not mean for you to take part in the battle, only to watch it. I was at the Whispering Wood, my lord. I have seen enough butchery. I came here as an envoy. And envoy you shall leave, then they said, but wiser than you came. You shall see what befalls rebels with your own eyes, so your son can hear it from your own lips. We'll keep you safe. Never fear. He turned away to make his dispositions. Lord Mathis, you shall lead the centre of my main battle. Bryce, you'll have the left. The right is mine. Lord Estermott, you shall command the reserve. I shall not fail you, your grace, Lord Estermott said, replied. Lord Mathis Rowan spoke up. And who shall have the van? Your grace, said Sir John Fossaway, I beg the honour. Beg all you like, said Guyard the Green. By rights it should be one of the seven who strikes the first blow. It takes more than a pretty cloak to charge a shield wall, Randall Tarley announced. I was leaving Mace Harrell's van when you were still sucking on your mother's tea to Guyard. A clamour filled the pavilion as other men loudly set forth their claims. The nights of summer, Catelyn thought, when they raised a hand. Enough, my lords. If I had a dozen vans, all of you would have all of you would have one. But the greatest glory by rights belongs to the greatest knight. Sir Lawrence shall strike the first blow. I don't know if you heard that. He's fucking blowing her nose. What the fuck is wrong with her? I have no idea. What the fuck? Right, but anyway. Jesus. Right. It's been going on for like a fucking month. Who has the fucking a runny nose for a month, right? Fuck me. Right? So he's just given the command of the vanguard to Loris. Right? With a glad heart, your grace, the knight of flowers knelt before the king. Grant me your blessing and a knight to ride beside me with your banner. Let the stag and rose go to battle side by side. Renly glanced about him. Brienne, your grace, she was still armoured in her blue steel, though she had taken off the helm. The crowded tent was hot and sweat plastered limp yellow hair to her broad homely face. My place is at your side. I am your sworn shield. One of seven, the king reminded her. Never fear, four of your fellows will fight. Will be with me in the fight. Brienne dropped to her knees. If I must part from your grace, grant me the honour of arming you for battle. Catelyn heard someone snigger behind her. She loves him, poor thing. She's, oh shit, I'll go back on that. Catelyn heard someone snigger behind her. She loves him, poor thing, she thought sadly. She'd play his squire just to touch him. She ne and never care how great a fool they think her. Poor Brienne, man, right? We paint our, we, we touch a paint there, we touch a paint. Mmm. <sighs> Grand. <coughs> Granted, Renly said. Now leave me all of you. Even kings must rest before battle. My lord, Catelyn said, there was a small sept in the village we passed. If you will not permit me to depart for a river run, grant me leave to go there and pray. As you will. Sir Rubar, Sir Robar, give Lady Cart. Give Lady Stark safe escort to this sept, but see that she returns to us by dawn. You might do well to pray yourself, Catelyn added. For victory. For wisdom. Ren, they laughed. Loras, stay and help me pray. It's been so long I've quite forgotten how. He hasn't forgotten, because we all know what the fuck's going on there. As for the rest of you, I want every man in place. Oh, as for the rest of you, I want every man in place by first light, armed, armoured, and horsed. We shall give Stannis a dawn he will 
soon not forget. Dusk was falling when Kaplan left the pavilion. So Rubar Royce fell in beside her. She knew him slightly, one of Bronze Yon's sons, comely in a rough hewn way, a tourney warrior of some renown. Renly had gifted him a rainbow cloak and a suit of blood red armour and, and named him one of his seven. You are a long way from the Vale, sir, she told him. And uh, you far from Winterfell, my lady. I know what brought me here, but why have you come? This is not your battle, no more than it is mine. I made it my battle when I made Renly my king. The, Royce, the Royces are bannermen to House Arden. My f lord father owes Lady Liza fealty, as does his heir. A second son must find glory where he can. Sir Rubar shrugged. A man grows weary of glories. He could not be older than one and twenty, Catelyn thought, of an age with his king, but her king, Rob, had more wisdom at fifteen than this youth had ever learned, or so she prayed. In Catelyn's small corner of the camp, Shad was slicing carrots into the kettle, Hal Mullen was dicing with three of his Winterfell men, and Lucas Blackwood sat sharpening his dagger. Lady Stock, Lucas said when he saw her, Mullen says it's to be battle at dawn. Hell has the truth of it, she answered. And a loose tongue as well, it would seem. Do we fight or flee? We pray, Lucas, she answered him. We pray. Ooh, what a fucking chapter, man. That's class. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed me reading of that. I highly enjoyed reading that shit. Um, and there's one thing, because I blind read these, um, um, the, the use of accents and stuff, like I, I mean, some of them may be rather similar and I hope that you were able to differentiate that different people are saying different things. I hope that, you know, you got the difference between Randy and Stannis. But it really helps me. I, I do a lot of theatre and stuff. Well, not at the minute because of the coronavirus and all that shit. But I do a lot of theatre. So this really helps me, like, just have a, have a fucking un, un, um, unrehearsed practice at changing my voice. And I, I, I really enjoy doing shit like that. I think it's, it's fucking brilliant. But um, a fucking a fantastic chapter. It's, uh, Parley, the standoff between the two brothers is, is just fucking fantastic. Um, the description of Storm's End as a castle is is fucking great. We get the um, we get the 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 lore behind the castle as well and stuff like that. So yeah, guys, th thank you very much for joining me for this um, pints of ice and fire. Here, let me tell you something. If you have any suggestions on what chapter um, you would like me to do next or in the future. Please comment below. I would like to hear from you very much and I will give it my best attempt and stuff like that. Um, I don't know whether I should start reading the chapters before I actually read them to camera. I think it's more fun that I just do it blind and just fucking fire it out, you know. But guys, thank you very much for joining me. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit that join button, ring that bell. Also, do not forget to check out Bobby Marno, Lord Commander Bobby Marno's um, Fire and Blood. He does audiobooks on Fire and Blood. They're a little bit more formal. There she goes again. Fuck me. They're a little bit more formal than what I do here with this. I mean, he doesn't fucking snack down on tasty, tasty fucking pints. But there we go. Mm -hmm. But still, very much worth checking out. Um, Bobby goes through it chapter by chapter and you know it's 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 great to have all this background knowledge. You see the Targaryens are conquering bastards and fucking you know, the realm's a play thing. I am the blood of the dragon. But you think you're fucking better than everybody else? Fuck off. You know what I'm saying? It's great. It's really, really good. And I might do the heads night in future episodes as well. Alright, guys, thank you very much for joining me. As usual, we appreciate uh, Bobby and I appreciate you taking the time to watch our videos, um, to spread the word, and 
just for being there. Thank you very much. And guys, um, there's only one thing left to do, and that is, of course, to sign out. Um, so, uh, without further ado, right? Fucking, hey, fucking, the North remembers. Fucking what? Ooh.